Sometimes when you're building in VoiceFlow, you need to direct your workflow in a more complex way than what buttons can provide. That's where choices come in. The choice step lets you listen for certain things and then direct the user based on their input. However, unlike with buttons, what the user says doesn't need to exactly match the text on the button. For example, if on my button step, when I ask if the user prefers voice or flows, they say, I like flows rather than just flows, that wouldn't be considered a match. With the choice step, we can set things up so we understand they're saying flows is what they prefer. Let's give it a try. We're gonna go to listen and drag a choice step on. And we'll connect this block to both of our previous steps. Now, we're gonna ask the question, how can I help? That's a pretty general question and people might answer it in lots of different ways. But our agent is gonna be able to help in three different ways. We're gonna be able to write a song about VoiceFlow, tell them how cool VoiceFlow is, and send them a VoiceFlow themed meme. As you can see, we're building a really useful agent today. Now, there's lots of different ways people might ask for these things, and that's why the choice step is a good choice for us to use right now. So if we click on our choice step, we can create a new trigger. We'll then add an intent. Think of an intent as the goal behind what the user is saying. It's what they intend for your agent to do. Our users intend for our agent to write a song about voice flow. So we'll set the name here to write a song. We'll also need to add a description. This is used by our AI model to understand when this intent should be triggered. So make sure it's really clear. We'll set it to trigger when the user asks for a song. Don't trigger when they ask for a rap. This is a pretty simple example. If you wanna see a more complex one where Daniel's made a way better description, check out this video. One cool thing we're doing here is we're being really clear about when we do and don't want this intent to trigger. We don't want it to trigger when the user asks for a rap. So we've made it really clear. We're then gonna be asked for some utterances. Utterances are some examples of how a user might ask for an intent. But one important thing to know is that what the user asks for doesn't need to exactly match any of your utterances. They're just there to improve how accurately the user's intent can be detected. Now, we can manually write some utterances. So for example, we can say, sing a song about voice flow, or we can use the power of AI to generate a bunch. Let me generate five. Now, one thing to know is you've gotta be careful. If the utterances that are generated don't match what you're intending them to do, you, you might need to tweak your description a bit. For example, here, it's telling us to generate songs about nature, and that's not quite what we were going for. So let's delete them and see if we can come up with some better ones. That is so much better. Now that's all good to go, let's create our intent. And there it is. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for our other two intents now, telling us about how cool voice flow is and sending a meme. There we go. The only thing left for me to do now is to handle the user asking for something that our agent can't do. Just like with buttons, we can do that using the no match option. So let's turn that on now. Now, we can either reprompt, or we can make it work like any other trigger by enabling this follow path option. So if I want our agent to just get very sad and experience existential dread because it can't do what I asked it to do, then we can make it do that. Look. Not quite sure why you would do that though. And just like with buttons, if we only want to listen to these specific options, we should disable the listen to other triggers option as well. So now let's just go and ask the user what we want them to do with a message. We're gonna say, how can I help? By adding that message step at the top of our block. And uh, I'll quickly go and set up the paths for these as well. So uh, give me a second. And there we go, our flow is good to go. So let's try it out, we'll hit play here. But one thing you should know is that if you made any changes to your intents or any of the utterances, you're gonna to need to retrain your agent whenever you make a change. You can do that at the top of this preview window by clicking training and then clicking train agent. It'll take a couple seconds and then your agent will be ready to go. So now I have an agent that understands what I'm asking it for. If I go and make it do something wild like make bread, it's gonna get a bit confused and have a, a bit of an existential crisis. But if we go back and we ask it for something it can do, such as make me a song, 
Remember, that wasn't one of our utterances, but it still should be able to do this perfectly. Wow, what a great song. So that's the choice step, intents and utterances. In our next video, I'll teach you all about entities. They let you extract specific data out of an intent.